think of the places my get up has been. Old age is golden or so I've heard said, but I wonder each evening as I crawl into bed with my ears in a drawer, my teeth in a cup, my eyes on the table until I wake up. As sleep dims my vision, I say to myself, is there anything else I shouldn't lay on the shelf? Though nations are warring and businesses vexed, we'll still stick around to see what happens next. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin. And think of the places my get up has been. I wake up each morning and dust off my wits, open the paper and read the obits. When I'm not there, I know I'm not dead, so I eat a good breakfast and go back to bed. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went, but in spite of it all, I'm able to grin and think of the places my get up has been. When I was younger, my slippers were red. I could kick up my heels right over my head. When I was older, my slippers were blue, but still I could dance the whole night through. Now that I'm older, my slippers are black. I huff to the store and I puff my way back. But never you laugh, I don't mind at all. I'd rather be huffing than not puff at all. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin. Think of the places my get up has been. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin. Think of the places my get up has been. <laughs>
stories ever told. There'll be a time for everyone. Love that cannot be undone. Does anyone remember where the time goes? As the notes roll and tumble off the banjo. And still remembers how the song goes. His heart still remembers how the love goes. Hello, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. We are going to get the show started in a moment. For those of you on the more interactive Zoom side of things, we would like as many of you as are comfortable to remain unmuted during the show for laughter and applause between songs. But please remain quiet during the songs. In order to be unmuted, you must be in a quiet space. That means phones on silent, no dogs barking, no children running around, or the thunderous crunching of potato chips. Just like in a movie theater or a real concert. But if you would like to volunteer to be unmuted during the show, you will need to find the raise your hand button. To find it, go to the bottom of your screen to find the participant button. Once you click it, you will see a window pop open at the right side of your screen. At the bottom of that list of names, you will see this blue hand, the raise your hand button. If you click this button, you are signaling the text that you are in a quiet space and would like to volunteer to be unmuted. If you find yourself muted again, do not take it personally. Sometimes there is a noise in the background that can interfere with the show that you can't hear, such as computer fans kicking on, things like that. Thank you so much. And with that, I would like to introduce Reverend Robert Jones and Matt Watroba. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you. Let me just get a good view here of you all. I'd like to welcome you all to our concert. We wish we could be there live and in person, of course, but if, but that isn't happening right now. Uh, but we are really, really pleased to do this virtually. My name is Matt Wachroba, and this is uh, Reverend Robert Jones. And uh, Robert, tell them why we start with this song. Well, we start with this song because sort of our career started with this song. We were both um, music hosts on Detroit's public radio station, WDET, and we both played, and somebody decided to come up with a great idea. What would happen if the folk host met the blues host uh, at a record store uh, in concert? <laughs> and we didn't, we had never played together before, so we decided to play music that we had in common. And lo and behold, we played country music all night. <laughs> Been playing this song ever since. And there's a part in it for you. All you have to do every time I sing Mind Your Own Business, you shout it back in rhythm. Now I know that seems a little strange out there in Facebook and YouTube and Zoom land, but just all you have to do is like this, I'll go, why don't you mind your own business? I said, mind your own business. Mind your own business. Because if you mind your own business, then you won't be minding mine. Let's try it. If my wife and me is for some mystery, that's all right. Me and that's a woman got a license to buy it, but don't you mind your own business? I said, mind your own business. If you mind your own business, then you won't be minding mine. There's a lady on the party line, a nosy thing. She picks a blue receiver when she knows it's my ring, but don't you mind your own business? I said, mind your own business. If you mind your own business, then you won't. Oh, 
always whistle when she walks by. Why don't they mind their own business? Mind your own business. If you mind your own business, then you won't be minded. Mind. You got one more in your business. a little bit of folk music and it's uh, a little taste of folk music not because of the style of it because there are lots of styles within folk music but it's folk music because of the nature of it it's the kind of music everyday folks used to make and still make for each other add a friend with a guitar add a friend with a harmonica add some folks from across <laughs> the country and you got folk music and we were so as i mentioned so looking forward to being with you all in chippewa Falls uh, up in Wisconsin. We love Wisconsin, uh, and that and singing the the front of the building just was really it was just inspiring. It looks so yeah. great. So maybe next time we'll be there live when this whole crazy stuff is over. But Robert and I go around the country, or or and we try to remind people how American roots music is a window into our story as Americans. And if you take a song like "Mind Your Own Business." When, when that song is played like that, it's a country song. If you slowed that song down, it would sound like the blues. If you sped it up, it would be rock and roll. Because one of the things that Robert and I have discovered over the years and through our friendship and through our scholarship is that when you go to look at this music, there are more things in common than there are different. And we think that's true with the people who brought the music to America many, many years ago. We've discovered that Every time a new kind of American music is born, it's because different cultures shared their music with each other in America. And back in the 19th century, when there were no things such as radio or, or phonographs, people made their music regionally, but very quickly it started to change when people could see it on film, they could hear it on phonographs, and they could hear it on the radio. And just to show you how this music is connected, if I can talk my partner into this, we're gonna show you about eight decades of American music in the 20th century in about eight minutes. Wrapped up in three chords and in five notes. Now for you musicologists, those five notes are the major pentatonic scale. And whether that scale is major or minor, it's a big part of blues, which blues was this amazing music that came out just before the turn of the century and guys like Sun House in Mississippi would be trying to figure out how to do a new song and he might come up with a lick like Got a letter this morning You ring it red Said hurry hurry cause Girl your love is dead Got a letter this morning Oh Lord I ring it red Say Mississippi Delta didn't stay in the Delta. About 50 miles north of the Delta is a city called Memphis. And Memphis has piano players. So those piano players got a hold of those five notes and played them like this. And with the other hand, they played the three chords. And it became. Hot stuff in the 1920s. 
But the Great Depression brought on the 1930s, or maybe it's the other way around. <coughs> and all of a sudden, those piano players started working in black churches because they were just looking for work. And black church music started sounding suspiciously like Boogie Woogie. They didn't call it church Boogie Woogie, they called it gospel. Like this. Well, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, Lord, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Lord, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, the secret was, those were the same three chords <laughs> and the same five notes. Now you can imagine moving to the mid-1930s and a young man by the name of Bill Monroe comes up with a style called bluegrass. Ladies and gentlemen, frankly one of the most un-Negro kind of musics you can imagine. <laughs> Five white guys standing around a microphone that looks like this, with wearing cowboy hats and yelling "Yeehaw!" Yeehaw. <laughs> Not my idea, of heaven. But guess what? Bluegrass is built on blues, in part because of the man named Arnold Schultz, an African American artist who never recorded, and in part because of the guitar player, a guy by the name of Lester Flat. Because when at the end of the verse, Lester would play something called the G run. Would you demonstrate the G-Run? Sure, anybody who learns bluegrass guitar, I'll put my fingers up to the camera, knows at the end of every one of those musical phrases, they play this. That's nice. We do that again. Now, that's actually just a boogie-woogie play with a flat pick. You end up with songs like, I'm going down the road feeling bad. Five notes. Doesn't end there. I imagine it's about, uh, say, 1948. Got a young man who was raised in the black church, but he takes the gospel music and secularizes it. Everywhere he used to say Jesus, he says, Baby, that man's name is Ray Charles. And Ray Charles says, That's all right, you know, just sing along, baby. And one night they run out of songs. Ray Charles says, That's all right. Just sing back to me what I sing to you. So that's what the band does. And Ray goes, say, hey, hey, oh, oh, hey, hey, oh, oh, hey, hey, oh. oh. Tell me what I say. 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 Say, I. Tell me what I say. 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 I say those are the same three chords and the same five notes, except now we call it R and B. But it doesn't end there. Imagine it's 1955 and you got yourself one of those newfangled televisions, a gigantic wooden box in the middle of your living room with a little tiny screen, and it only gets three stations. Well, that means everybody watches the same thing basically at the same time. And uh, Sunday nights, everybody's watching. Ed Sullivan. He comes out and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have a really good show for you tonight. You're going to like this young man. He comes to us from Tupelo, Mississippi, by way of Memphis, Tennessee. He uses three chords and five notes, ladies and gentlemen. The kid walks out on the stage and goes, Boom, for the money, for the show. Get right in our go cat go my go to That's with my blue suede shoe You can do the thing yourself my blue suede shoe yeah. Blue 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 suede shoes 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 You can do the thing yourself my blue suede shoe Of course every kid in America knows who that is that's Elvis. 
And you can imagine that in the 1950s, there were kids, white kids, who wanted to be Chuck Berry and black kids who wanted to be Elvis. And they were changing the world without knowing it. They were just listening to each other's music. So by the time five good-looking black kids tour from Detroit in the deep segregated South, where they've got a rope down the middle of the gymnasium, when those kids hear those five notes coming out of Detroit, the kids themselves tear down the rope and start to dance together because the Temptations played as notes like Sing it. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way, my girl, my girl, my girl, talking about my girl, my girl. Ooh. Oh, I could love doing that. I know you do. <laughs> so. Sometimes we're in a school and, and we'll do that for kids and they'll kind of say, well, that's cool, but that's granddad's music. You know, what does it have to do with us? Well, we have to take them back to the Death Letter Blues, a 90-year-old song recorded by Sunhouse in 1928. And we end up with, well, you know, the Death Letter Blues in 2020 needs a little repent. So instead of doing each verse twice, we do each verse once. Speed up the tempo of the song, fade the music out, in which case it becomes. I got a letter this morning, how do you ring it red? Saying, hurry, hurry, call the girl you love is dead. You know, I packed up my suitcase, took up down the road. When I got there, she was laying out on the cooling board. I eat the post and I look down in her face and say, hey, you know I love you, but I just can't take your place. You know it's 300,000, but standing around the funeral ground, I didn't know how much I love to tell it, put my baby in the ground for my own. And then I walked away and said, hey, you know I love you, have to see you judgment day. You know I woke up this morning, it was a part of a break day, and I've been sitting on a pillow where my baby used to lay. Went to church, bowed down, I tried to pray, but the blues come along and they blow my spirit away. Woke up this morning and about the break of day, and I was hugging on a pillow where my baby used to lay and say, look. I thought I heard her call my name. She didn't call so loud, but she called so plain. Yeah, boy. Yeah. So, so all the way from 1920s boogie woogie barrel house blues to rap music of the 20th century, uh, 21st century, because all this music is connected. It is. Uh, it you again. You can argue about what makes it different, but what we love about this music. And quite frankly, the story this music tells is that it reminds us that diversity isn't something that should be tolerated. It is, in fact, something that should be celebrated. And so that's what Robert and I try to do everywhere we go. Remind people that if it wasn't for this, uh, for the sharing of this culture, we wouldn't have this music. And so Robert and I love to sort of explore some of these songs that have taken on lives of their own as they travel uh, just like that game of telephone, they change over time as people learn them, teach them to their family, their family teaches it to the next family, and pretty soon we have a, a song that has been around for a hundred years. They have, you know, this kind of music has given us the groundbreaking artists. It has given us the, the artists who, for example, like Eddie Lang and Lonnie Johnson got together and, and produced the fundamentals and the foundation of jazz guitar. Well, by the same token, the Carter family, especially A.P. Carter, got together with this young African-American guy by the name of Leslie Riddle. And as they walked along the highways and byways, they listened to churches, both black and white, and they started to realize that they had songs in common. They might not always sound the same, but they were the same song. And that made America richer for them. Here's a good example of one of those songs. The song's been done in bluegrass style and folk and old timey. Woody Guthrie did a version of this song, but it comes from the Carter family. Here's our version. 
Someone on the mountain. Someone on the mountain. Reaping in the valley. Reaping in the valley. Someone on the mountain. Someone on the mountain. Reaping in the valley. Reaping in the valley. Someone on the mountain. Someone on the mountain. Reaping in the valley. Reaping in the valley. You're gonna reach just what you sow. If you've been alive. If you've been alive. Better quit your life. Better quit your life. If you've been alive. If you've been alive. Better quit your life. Better quit your life. If you've been alive, you're going to reap just what you sow. Someone on the mountain, someone on the mountain, reaping in the valley, reaping in the valley. Someone on the mountain, someone on the mountain, reaping in the valley, reaping in the valley. Someone on the mountain, reaping in the valley, in the valley. You're going to reap just what you sow. If you've been a gambler, if you've been a gambler, better put your gamble. If you've been a gambler, if you've been a gambler, better put your gamble. If you've been a gambler, if you've been a gambler, better put your gamble. You're gonna reap just what you sow. Well, God took Noah, God took Noah, rainbow sign, rainbow sign, God took Noah, God took Noah. Rainbow sign, rainbow sign. God told no, I don't know. Rainbow sign, it won't be water. A fire next time, said it won't be water. But a fire next time, fire next time. Said it won't be water. But a fire next time, fire next time. Said it won't be water. But a fire next time, fire next time. We'll keep no runs in that one too. So one of the things we discover is that as important as this tradition is, maybe the most important about thing about the tradition is the fact that we can create new music in the tradition. And we can decide, you know, whether we want to draw on an old song or if we want to um, uh, repeat an old song or if we want to create a new song from old cloth. So why don't you do one for us, man? Sure. You know, this is a song that I uh, that I wrote uh, after Robert and I had done a whole weekend of uh, of Martin Luther King uh, events uh, during Martin Luther King weekend, and I love Martin Luther King weekend. It's my become my favorite ho holiday, mainly because no one has got the guts to make a, a furniture sale out of it quite yet. I'm sure it'll happen. It will happen. <laughs> right. It will happen. But uh, I've been thinking about this song a lot lately with all the all these consciousness being raised over uh, systematic racism and uh, how things need to change in our country to, to make it equal for all people. And I, and I think about what Dr. King stood for and it reminded me of this song, which sort of just uh, goes through some of the iconic and important uh, things that happened during the Civil Rights Movement. When Rosa took that fearless ride I couldn't stand outside the jail Singing free at last I wasn't there that awful day They took those choir girls away I couldn't see their mother's eyes Or hear the wicked blast But Martin Luther, I am here To march and sing right through this fear I will hold this candle proud and hope to light a spark. Martin Luther, hear my prayer, I am here and I declare, 
Love will drive the hate away and shine right through the dark. Little Rockley took a stand. I wasn't there to hold her hand or feel the cold and evil stare she felt as she walked by. I couldn't feel the summer breeze that blew across the southern trees where nooses hung for all to see. I wasn't there to cry. But Martin Luther, I am here to march and sing right through this fear. I will hold this candle proud and hope to light a spark. Martin Luther, hear my prayer. I am here and I declare love will drive the hate away and shine right through the dark. I wasn't there in 63, but your dream's still alive in me. 200,000 marched back then, even more now beat the drum. I wasn't there in 68 when the sin of violence sealed your fate. I couldn't hear the mournful cries of we shall overcome. But Martin Luther, I am here to march and sing right through this fear. I will hold this candle proud and hope to light a spark. Martin Luther, hear my prayer. I am here and I declare. Love will drive the hate away and shine right through the dark. Our love will drive this hate away and shine right through the dark. Nice. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Do we got time for another one or should we move on? Well, let's see. We got a. Well, let's got... do it. What are they doing anyway, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> It's Saturday night. Yeah, it's Saturday Saturday night. night. Let's do a couple solos. How's that? Sound? Okay, sounds good. Because I, I really love to sing this song for you because it's just so. It was written before all this stuff sort of happened, and yet it was prophetic. And it was written by a young woman uh, by the name of Sarah Lynch Thomason. And a lot mm. of people don't know this song, so I think it's kind of fun to start new folk songs as well. And I think this song has the the potential of being sung for a really long time because it, it's, it's a hopeful song. And what I love about this as a song leader, for those of you who may not know me, one of my specialties is getting a crowd of people to sing along sort of Pete Seeger style. And one kind of song that works really well for this is a song that has a lot of repetition. So even if you don't know the song right away, you'll pick up the patterns if you're paying attention and you'll be able to sing this from wherever you are right now watching this. So give it a shot. This is, uh, again, a song I think is prophetic, written by a young woman, which gives me hope as well. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more waters rising, they will find their way to me. There are more waters rising, this I know, this I know. There are more waters rising, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know. There are more fires burning, they will find their way to me. There are more fires burning, this I know, this I know. There are more fires burning, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. There are more mountains falling, they will find their way to me. There are more mountains falling, this I know, this I know. There are more mountains falling, this I know. I will wade through the water, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the water, this I know. I will wade through the water when they find their way to me. I will wade through the water, this I know, this I know. I will wade through the water, this I know. I will walk 
through the fire, this I know, this I know, I will walk through the fire, this I know. I will walk through the fire when they find their way to me. I will walk through the fire, this I know, this I know. I will walk through the fire, this I know. I will rebuild the mountain, this I know, this I know. I will rebuild the mountain, this I know. I will rebuild the mountain when they find their way to me. I will rebuild the mountain, this I know, this I know. I will rebuild the mountain, this I know. That's nice. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's cool. You know, we are blessed um, as musicians that we... We both play pretty unique instruments, and uh, how they come to us is a story in and of itself. But uh, this is a, a song that I wrote about two things. A, I've got a relatively new guitar, and B, I come from Detroit. <laughs> This old house was built on Trumbull Street Back in 1910 When the whole world worked for Henry Ford He was the poor man's friend Detroit money built it But it outlived the fame Of that city that put the world on wheels And gave Motown its name But when you come from Detroit You have to know, my friend that you cannot surrender and you cannot give in and even when you're broken and you're almost at the end know that if you save the pieces you will rise again Milton Smith he lived in this old house for almost 60 years and it had his share of singing it had his share of tears Through the coolies and Hernandez's Time would take its toll In 2012 they took her down 102 years old But when you come from Detroit You have to know, my friend You cannot surrender Oh, and you cannot give in And even when you're broken And you're almost at the end But I travel near and far And the Detroit storyteller Wants to play Detroit guitar So I met a builder named Sam Nicky A man of awesome skills Arch tops, flat tops, ukuleles Ain't nothing he can't build So I got something I'd like to show you And I think it's kind of sweet See, I built this from this old house that used to stand on Trumbull Street. I used maple from the floorboard and walnut from the shelf. And the top is from a ceiling joist I couldn't clean myself. Now I play a Detroit guitar made of hundred-year-old wood. And I got to tell you, she sang was mighty good. Cause when you come from Detroit, you have to know not surrender, Lord, and you cannot give in, and even when you're broken and you're almost at the end, know that if you say the pieces, you will sing again. So this is a this is a guitar that's built out of a house, and you see these stripes on the back. Those are maple floorboards. The dark parts are pieces of maple, uh, of pieces of a uh, walnut from uh, from the shelves, and the top is from a ceiling joist. It had a really cool stripe running through it, and so uh, no matter where we play, we uh, can play in Chippewa 
Falls, but then we're always, I'm always playing Detroit. <laughs> That's right. So cool. So, you know, Matt was talking about um, some of the upheaval that we're going through right now. And, and someone asked me to write a song, and I hope I get it right. I hope I remember it. But there's a song I wrote not very long ago to encourage people to get up and vote. And uh, I figured this might be my last shot to sing it to a public uh, before the opportunity to vote presents itself. So we're going to check the tuning here. Thank you, my brother. And uh, while, while, uh, while Robert's doing that, we do want to remind you that although we are offering this concert for free, it really does make a difference in these times if you uh, can afford to, uh, to make a donation, either if you have a Venmo account or a PayPal account, you can do it either way or send a check. And if you look, um, it'll be on Facebook right now as to how you can do that, what those addresses are. Um, all the money, whether it goes to Venmo or PayPal, ends up coming to, to Common Chords or to Robert and I. So that would be uh, wonderful if you get a chance to do that. Or as Ray Charles said, every contribution, every record you buy from me benefits the blind. So everything you buy from us benefits a worthy family in Detroit. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> In 16 and 19, America started When 20-some Africans stepped on to the shore That was the start of America's dreaming For they knew they'd see Angola no more And there were the moments Jesus taught us of mercy what you do unto others, you do unto me. Then he died on the cross to make all men holy. And our fathers, they died to make all men free. And these are the moments that call us to action. These are the moments we learn how to stand. These are the moments we rise to the vision. Well, let us endeavor for greatness again. And there were the moments we welcomed the masses. The tired, the hungry, who yearned to breathe free. And they followed the dream like so many before. And they follow the dreaming just like you and me. And there were the moments we cheered for Apollo. And the moments we wept when Columbia fell. United like men in the days of Pearl Harbor. They left friends and families and marched in the hell. Well, these are the moments that call us to action. These are the moments we learn how to stand. These are the moments we rise to the vision and let us endeavor for greatness again. And there was that moment we forgot about color and elected a leader in spite of his skin. And he helped lead us back from the brink of disaster. Let us get back to that moment again. And there were dark moments when young boys like Emmett had lives cut short by the hate of the clan. Can we really sit by over 60 years later? And do nothing while it all happens again. So let us rise up in the year of the COVID. Though we wear masks, let our spirits be seen. 
let us endeavor to find our greatness and let us fulfill America's dream. Let us endeavor to find our greatness and let us let us discover America's dream. That's a good one. Thank you. But built on the foundation of all the stuff we've been talking before. Absolutely. And that's that's the way all this stuff holds together. You know, I think if we got a little time, Robert, um, yeah. could we do uh, uh, that Reverend Gary Davis song? I think oh, yeah. it's good to bring him into the room. No doubt. Rev was a was a great guitar player, happened to be blind, and made his living out on the streets of New York. And if he could pull together a, a listening congregation, if you will, who were willing to put a little money in his hat, he'd get them all singing, take them all to church with simple songs like this one. Um, a song called, uh, I Heard the Angels Singing. And there's a part in it for you. It goes, I heard the angels singing. I heard the angels singing. I heard, I heard the angels singing. One more time, I heard. I heard the angels. Just do what I do. One day when I was walking along, I heard the angels singing. I looked around and I saw no one. I heard the angels singing. They said to me, Lord, I heard the angels singing. Said your sins are forgiven and your soul set free. I heard the angels singing. I said, one more and soon. You know, one more and soon, Lord, one more and soon. You know. They called him the Harlem Street Singer. Yes, indeed. He was, uh, he <laughs> An was quite the man. And, and he taught so many people, influenced so many folks, like, you know, um, Rory Block and, and um, my friend... Uh, uh, Book, uh, 
but yeah, Roy Bookbinder. Roy Bookbinder. Um, and oh, among Dave, Dave Van the Rome. many, Dave, yeah. a lot of people yeah. count him as an influence. So, well, since we're talking nice. about angels, maybe we could do a couple of original songs. And uh, I like it. I like it. So, this is a song. You know, I mean, you may not realize it, but I actually, I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. Of a small no, why Baptist wouldn't church. they realize that <laughs> after that song? <laughs> Whiskey and women. <laughs> um, and so. Um, I'm familiar with, with a few Bible stories. <laughs> and it was around the time, uh, about 20 years ago, of the attack on the towers in New York. And I got to tell this, um, while those towers were, were coming down, and it was so surreal, and uh, everybody, you know, patriotism was just running rampant. And folks were doing these songs of what they considered to be patriotism. You know, we're going to put a boot in your butt. And <laughs> folks were trying to join the military. And everybody was thinking revenge. And my buddy over here, he came, we were working at a radio station. He came in and he said, I wonder, has anybody thought about forgiveness? Now, I'm a preacher and I'm like, dude, it's too early to start talking about forgiveness. They're going to knock your head off. Beat you off. And, then I, and then I went home and I wrote a song about forgiveness. <laughs> so the idea of this song draws from the book of Genesis, where... Um, Jacob is waiting for his brother to come against him with 400 armed men because Jacob had wronged his brother. But then he had acquired family and he acquired cattle. He, he'd become a man of substance and responsibility. And as his brother was coming against him, he sent his family on ahead. Hopefully they would, you know, escape his brother's wrath and, and he would be there to intercept his brother. But while he was waiting, he started wrestling with a being. Some guy showed up and he started wrestling with him. He didn't know what the be what or who the being was until the, the the day started to break and and the being said, Let me go for the day is breaking. And Jacob said, I will not let go until you bless me. And that's when he realized he was wrestling with an angel. And uh, that ended up producing this song. And it's called I Wrestle with the Angel and your part is and I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. That's it. Like Jacob in the wilderness, I don't know wrong or right. But I look to God in heaven to get me through this wicked night. For when my brother comes to kill me, all that I can see is that I must be under him before he can be one to me. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. Now grace is still amazing, but for him who will not see. He says that grace had brought to save thus far don't mean a thing to me. I don't hate you for your actions, your name I barely know. I hate you for what our father did a long, long time ago. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And when you wrestle with the angel, the fight might leave you lame. But if you hold on to the morning, the Lord will change your name. Oh, the Lord will change your name. And when my brother comes to kill me, I hope he'll understand how much I'd rather beat him man to man than to beat him hand to hand. And as he comes against our families, I know we'll have to fight. And sometimes war is what you have to but that don't make it right. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I wrestle with the angel all night long. And I
wrestle with the angel all night long. So like Jacob in the wilderness, when we grapple through the night, don't let go without the blessing that comes with the morning's light. For when Jacob met his brother, they both put aside the sword, and they called him by his new name, he who wrestles with the Lord. And I wrestle with the angel all night long, and I wrestle with the angel all night long, and I wrestle with the angel all night long, and I wrestle with the angel all night long. And when you wrestle with the angel, the fight might leave you lame. But if you hold on to the morning, the Lord will change your name. Oh, let him change your name. The song is really very similar in theme. <laughs> yeah. This is a more recent song that I wrote back in 2017 when I realized that all my Facebook friends, or at least half of my Facebook friends, unfriended the other half of my Facebook friends. And I thought, something's going on. <laughs> How could that happen? How can that happen? So much hate. And I just know it's more complicated than that. If we dig a little deeper and find those things. Just like we said earlier, we can fight about the things that separate us or we can find those things that unite us. I'm recommending the unite us. Could you love me if I don't look like you? Is it deeper? Is it stronger? Something hidden, something true. If I stare a little longer, will I see myself in you? Could you love me if I don't look like you? Could you love me if I don't think like you? Is it deeper? Is it stronger? Something hidden, something true. If I stare a little longer, will I see myself in you? Could you love me? I don't think like you. It's burning. This life's a burning candle, and it would be a shame if we ignored the difference between the smoke and the flame. mention too that just about every song, almost every song we played this evening is available on a CD that we took only about 29 years to make. 
<laughs> so that means we made it with love. We made it with lots of love and lots of experience. We went into the studio and did these songs in one take, pretty much. And uh, so even the three chords, five notes, all that stuff, and it's all on a CD called Common Chords, which you can download on all the download sites like iTunes and places like that. But you can also buy it direct if you want a hard copy on my website, which is mattwitroba.net. If you want to find out more about Robert and the stuff he does as well, check out revrobertjones.com. Yes, sir. And together we have commoncords.net. So there's a lot of a lot of places to go to learn more about what you've heard this evening. Uh, a lot of the times, though, you know, folks, when we're interviewed about this music, inevitably someone will say, well, what, what do you think is the most important song in history? What song, do, and do songs really change anything? My answer to that is pretty patently, absolutely yes. Because what we've learned is that through art and through music and through songs, the best way to change a mind is to do it through the heart first. And these songs get to you in the heart. But the song we're about to close our evening with is a song that, um, that I think, and I think Robert would agree, is maybe the most important song in American history. It's a song that's traveled the world. And it's a song that's based on a very old spiritual. People will often say that the blues is what is the basis of all American music. But I think Robert and I would both agree that you have to go before the blues right. and go to the spiritual. Yeah, the spiritual is the taproot. It's really at the root of American music. And, you know, the one thing about the spiritual as well is the fact that spirituals were made for everybody to sing. There are certain songs that only a certain person was associated with. It's like, I can't imagine anybody singing, you know, uh, Amazing Grace better than, say, uh, Mahalia. Mahalia Jackson or or Aretha Franklin, but then there is a version of Amazing Grace that everybody can sing, and this is that that kind of song. It's like it's not the stars; it's the song that's the star. Mm -hmm. So you imagine going back in the days of slavery, and you hear somebody maybe around a campfire, and they're singing this old hymn like, "I'll be alright." singing that song around a campfire in the morning, maybe the breakfast fire, knowing full well that the Underground Railroad would be uh, causing a whole bunch of those folks, maybe a third of that plantation, to take off for the north for destinations like Midnight, which in this case was the, the code word for Detroit. And it was a song that just made us feel better about ourselves and our situation, like so many of those spirituals did. But imagine... A hundred years later, after the successful bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama of 1955, when all of a sudden that we realized that this wasn't just a single incident in one city in our country, but this was the beginning of a true movement, which of course became the Civil Rights Movement. Back then it was just known as the movement. There was a place down in Tennessee in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains it was called the Highlander Folk School. And they were um, integral in planning and strategizing first the labor movement and then the civil rights movement. They had speakers like Dr. Martin Luther King. They had speakers and, well, they had students like Rosa Parks. And they would all day long learn the strategies of how they were gonna make a difference. And then at the end, they would all come together and do some kind of act of culture, whether it was sing a song, do a play, something, read a poem. But they always ended with that old spiritual, I will be all right. So in the early 60s, when they decided that this was bigger than just a bus boycott, 
they knew they needed a song that could represent the movement, a song that could be sung on the march. But rather than write a new song, which they certainly could have done, instead what they did is they took that old spiritual and they changed just a couple of things. First of all, they had to change the lyrics. I will be all right had to change to we because this movement was about all of us. And we weren't just going to be all right. We, in fact, had to overcome the obstacles to true freedom and equality for all people. So I will be all right became we shall overcome. And you can sing this song in a lot of different ways, like this. Or when you're marching, Pete Seeger realized you needed a little pep in the step. So we change it to this. And that old spiritual became what I think Robert and I both agree is the most important song in America's history. Sing it. We shall powerful was it was a zipper song that's what Lee Hayes of the Weavers called it all you had to do to keep the song going was change one phrase and you could sing a whole new verse you could put in you know like you know black and white together and and, and you could sing like we have power as, as the... but there was one verse that I think in fact Robert and I went down to that school to do an interview with the guy, Guy Carawan, who was one of the authors of this new version of the song. And Guy told us a story about how one evening, for like the umpteenth time, the school was being raided by the FBI. They cut the power, they snaked through this place with guns drawn, a terrifying situation. But one little 17-year-old African-American girl, rather than panic, just simply said the words, we are not afraid. And everybody started to sing. We are not afraid. We are not afraid. We are not afraid today. Today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. zipper song somehow it's, it's a song that never goes away and you might think of that as being a positive or a negative <laughs> but as we come up to November 3rd we can write new lines like oh we will rise again we will rise again going to happen is with this verse. Ooh, red and blue together. Red and blue together. Red and blue together. Oh, deep in my heart, oh, I Shall overcome. So, you know what, Dave? 
Robert and I would like to thank you all for taking a little bit of your Saturday evening and spending it with us. We want to thank all the folks up in, in Chippewa Falls, the Art Center, for inviting us. I know we were going to be there live this weekend, but this was what we needed to do for tonight. And if there's one way you could maybe thank us, since we can't physically hear your applause, we would love to know that you join us in singing this chorus or this, this verse with us one more time. Let me hear you. Ready, Robert? Who we shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe that we shall Jones. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And big thank you to Brandon O'Sullivan. Brandon, thank you, sir. The man Great show, everybody. Good job, guys. And thank you to all of you who have tuned in, regardless of the platform. <laughs> all right. Great show, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank Brandon. You. All right, everybody. Bye, everybody, on Facebook and YouTube. Take care, everyone. <laughs>